What's going on guys? Today I have some new updates for the price action order entry button. Uh, it is now much, much easier to use and it includes many more features. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a longer video. I want to try and explain everything that's included. Uh, if this is your first time using these buttons, I highly recommend watching the whole thing. Um, or if you've used it before and just want to skip to a certain section, I'll be sure to timestamp in the description down below. So check it out. Uh, with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so first let's load the buttons. Uh, right click, strategies, uh, look for your trade simple folder and your price action order entry. Uh, by the time you see this video, there may be a newer version. Uh, I'll always be sure to link it in the description down below. So let's click on that one. Uh, and all these properties, we'll go through all of them in more detail throughout the video. Uh, for now, I want to just focus on the main function of the buttons. So just click apply and enable. Uh, the first thing I want to note is all your calculations. Uh, so whether it's your entry, your stops, uh, share size, uh, even your targets, they're all based on your last closing handle. Uh, You'll, you'll see more examples of that throughout the video. Uh, for now, again, let's just see how it works. So let's click play. And uh, if you push long up here, you'll see this green line. Price needs to go above this line to enter long. And if you click short, uh, price needs to go below this line to enter short. Uh, so let's speed this up. Okay, so now that we're long, you'll notice up here, both of these buttons now say disabled. Uh, these won't do anything anymore while you're in the trade. Uh, this is to prevent, obviously, you don't, you don't wanna enter multiple positions and mess up your order. Uh, and for a highly, highly suggested uh, feature, uh, I heard a lot of you wanted this, you can now move your limits and your stop freely. Uh, they're no longer stationary. So I know a lot of you will be happy about that. Um, and let's speed this up a bit. Another thing we added is if you hit, let's say, your target, you no longer have to manually disable the buttons. They automatically disable, so you don't have to remember anymore. Uh, no, You won't enter any more trades you don't want to. Uh, and you can enter trades right away after. Uh, yeah, that's not a problem anymore. So I know a lot of you have mentioned that, and we'll be happy with these new features. <laughs> All right, that's the that's basically the main functions, and see you in the next section. In this section, we're gonna go over your entry and your stop properties. Uh, the first thing I want to know: if for whatever reason you do not want to stop loss, you can just simply toggle this little check mark and you won't get a stop loss when you enter a trade. Uh, so now uh, let's talk about the offset. Uh, what does the offset do? Uh, all it does is it sets your entry and stop past the high or the low of the last closing candle. So let's show an example. Uh, first, let's take this offset off so we can see our entries without it. Label down. So when we enter long, it sets it at the high of the last closing candle, and short will be at the low of the last closing candle. So let's just 
see what let's add some offset now uh let's do 10 percent so that's written out as 0.1 that'd be 10 percent offset enable and now you can see it's 10 percent farther away now uh all it does is it adds the range of the candle, 10% uh, of that, and adds it to the high or the low. And it's the same for the, the stop, just the opposite uh, direction, obviously. Um, so uh, if you prefer price, uh, let's say three cents, uh, you can do that as well. Or if you run into a scenario where you don't know which one you'll need, you just want to pick the higher of the two, uh, this automatically does that for you. Uh, so yeah, pre pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next section. In this section, we're going to go over your risk property. Uh, this is just basically how your share size is calculated. Uh, you have two different options. Uh, one is your candle R, which is based on the uh, last closing candles range. And then you have your actual R, which is based on the last closing candles range, plus your entry and your stop offset. Uh, we'll go through examples on both. Uh, for now, let's do candle R and your max loss. Let's keep it at 100 for now. So how are, is this calculated? The formula is pretty simple. It's just your max loss divided by the range of the last closing candle. Here it is 2.73. So 100 divided by 2.73 we end up with 36.6, which should give us 37 shares. Uh, let's enable this and enter. And here you can see we entered 37 shares. And that is your candle R. Now let's show an example of the actual R. Just one second, guys. Okay. So here we select actual R and we'll keep the max loss the same. Okay. And we enable this. So the formula is pretty much the same, except now we add the 10% for the entry and 10% for the stop or whatever. Uh, offset you selected that will get added onto the formula. Uh, so now it's 100 divided by 3.276, which should give us 31 shares. And here you can see 31 shares. Uh, I know. There's a, there's a debate on which is better, which is worse. I'm not here to debate that, I'm just giving everybody options. So do what works for you and we'll see you in the next section. In this section, we're gonna go over where your final profit target uh, will be set based on a couple of rules. Uh, first thing to note is if you do not want a profit target, you can just click this little box and it won't set a profit once you're in the trade. For now, let's leave it clicked. And now you have two options to calculate where your profit target will be. One is candle R, which is based on just 
the range of the last closing candle. Your other option is your actual R, which again, it's based on the last closing candle range plus your entry and your stop offset. We'll, we'll go through examples on both. For now, let's do candle R. And I have it set for the three R mark. So let's see where it sets. Here I have the FIB retracement uh, levels already set. So let's enter log. And you can see it automatically sets it right to the three R mark where we had it set. And that's pretty much it for the candle R. So let's uh, go through the actual R example. So now uh, this one will be based again on the last closing candles range plus your entry and your stop offset. So I already marked it with the offsets included. So when we enter long, at the three R mark, it automatically sets it a bit higher now because uh, it includes the offset. And again, I'm not here to debate which one's better, which one's worse. I'm just giving people options, do what's best for you, and see you in the next section. All right, the next few sections are gonna be all about your auto break evens and auto trail stops. Uh, here you're able to turn on or off uh, any that may be suitable for you. That is completely up to you. But to start off, we're gonna go through the offset break even. So what is an offset break even? Uh, here, this will set your stop to your entry candles high or low, depending if you're long or short, minus your stop offset. So let's run through an example going long real quick. Uh, here you see our target is 0.7R. So we'll see how this works. Enable, we're gonna go long. So now we have it set for 0.7R, which is this line. And once the price reaches this line, it will go to the entry candles high minus your stop offset, which will be 10% less. So it will be this line. Now let's speed this up and And there you go. Once it hit your 0.7R, it automatically moved your stop up to your entry candles high minus the 10% offset. And it would be the opposite if you're going short. So that's it for the break even with offset. I'll see you with the next break even. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the actual break even. So this, once it hits your target price, it will move it to whatever you actually entered at. So it gets your actual entry price and that's where it will set your stop. So it, it's more of an actual break even. Uh, here, we'll run through an example again. I'll set it for one R supply and let's go long. So now once it hits one R, it will move it to your actual entry price. And there you go. Once it hit this price up here, it moved your stop right to your entry. And that's all there is to that one.
See you in the next one. In this section, you have a custom stop set. Uh, here, you're able to customize where you want to set your stop uh, once it reaches whatever target you choose. Uh, let's go through an example real quick. Set that to two. So all I'm telling it here is once it reaches 2R, it's going to set your stop to the 1R level. So let's see how it works real quick. On. So once it reaches 2R, it's going to set your stop to the 1R. And there you go. Once it reached this level, it automatically moved your stop up to your 1R. That's all it is. See you in the next one. All right. In this final section, uh, you can select a trail stop option. And this works by continuously setting your stop higher every time price reaches a new target based on our frequency. So if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry, we'll go over an example just now. Uh, so once you select your trail stop option, uh, you have three options here. First, you have your trail stop trigger target. Uh, this is just when your trail stop is activated. So here we have it set for 2R. Then you have your trail stop trigger frequency. Uh, this, once your trail stop is activated, um, once it reaches every new, uh, for example, 0.3R, it will set, that's where it will set your new target. So once it reaches that, it'll be another 0.3 higher. Uh, for now, actually, let's set that to 0.5. So here will be every 0.5R, it'll be your new target. Uh, we'll, we'll go through an example in a bit. Then your trail stop size is how far away your stop is from each new trigger. So let's set that to 1R. So what I'm telling you now is... Once it reaches 2R, every time it hits a new 0.5R above that, it will set your stop 1R below each new 0.5R. So let, let's run it through the playback option and we'll see it live. So uh, let's enable this long. So we're waiting till it reaches the 2R level. Okay, so now that it reached 2R, I'm sorry. Once it reaches 2R, it sets your stop to 1R. And now our frequency is 0.5R. today. So once it reaches about halfway between these two points, it's going to move your stop 1R below that. Speed this up. So I'll a bit here. There we go. Okay, so it reached 0.5R and now it's 1R below that. And now we're waiting for 0.5R above that last one. So at the 3R mark, let's 
that up again. There we go. So it hit the three R mark. So now it's one R below that. And it's just gonna keep doing the frequency by 0.5 until you get stopped out like that. And yeah, that's all it is to it. One last thing I want to note uh, is if you're trading live, uh, be sure this little check mark is off. Uh, you only want this when you're using the playback option, uh, like I have been throughout this video. Uh, this is just to make it less CPU intensive. Uh, but if it's on while live trading, uh, it could cause some issues. So live trading, off. Uh, just wanted to make, make sure of that. Uh, but with that being said, this is the end of the video. Uh, hope you guys found this useful. If you did, uh, please leave a like down below. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, or anything, just leave a comment. And Or if you're in the Stock Lock Discord, uh, just DM me there, and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Take care.